Hi everybody, Mike Weissach here, and I have a quick tutorial on how to use luminosity masks to make a high dynamic range image without using any HDR software or any sort of tone mapping process. We're simply going to jump from Lightroom to bare bones Photoshop and be done. So pay attention, this is actually kind of a cool trick. If you take a look at the image that we have here, this is a picture from a recent trip to Zurich, and you can see Lightroom is telling us that this was underexposed by one stop. And it's pretty dark, um, but the bridge and the church here was fairly bright that we really needed to um, underexpose to get some detail there. If we look at an image that was overexposed by one stop, you can see that we have a really cool sky here. I really like this, this purplish blue and then some of the gray clouds. But what happened here is the church is unnaturally bright due to the way it was lit with these floodlights. Also, the bridge here, we are completely missing a line throughout the bridge. And we want to bring back some of that detail. So normally HDR would allow us to do that, but we're going to try and extend the dynamic range using these two images, but doing it manually. And check out how easy this is. I'm going to select the darker image and then hold down Control or Command on a Mac and click the other image. I'm going to right click select edit and go down to open as layers in Photoshop. Now I'm not going to click that because I already have. I'm going to jump right to Photoshop to save some time and you can see what we end up with. We have an image here uh, on the top layer which is our brighter image and if I turn that off we have our darker image below it. Here's how we use a luminosity mask and rather than explain what it is I'm just going to show you. I want to jump over to the channels palette, click that and you can see here's my RGB channel and here's my red channel, my green channel, my blue channel. This is super easy. I'm going to hold down control on my PC or command on a Mac and click on the RGB channel. Check out what happens. You can see that Photoshop has made a selection and if you've noticed these marching ants are surrounding the brighter parts of our image. If I'm going to jump back to my layers and now all I'm going to do is to create that luminosity mask is I'm going to come down to the bottom of the window here and click on Add Layer Mask. Now, remember the brighter parts of my images are selected, so as soon as I click that, we have a mask. I'm going to hold down the Alt key and click on my mask, and it's going to show me what that mask looks like. Now remember when you're dealing with masks, light reve white reveals and black conceals. So what it's done here is it's showing me more of the church and less of the sky and less of the water. That's the opposite of what I want. So I'm going to hold down, hit Control I or Command I on a Mac and invert that mask. Now what I have is you can see that the church is, is black because that was bright before as well as the bridge. The sky on the other hand is now white. If I click back on the actual thumbnail for the bright layer, look at what we have. We now have that really cool colored sky but the bridge now has detail in it, whereas before it didn't. And to show you an example of that, I'm going to hit the shift key and click on that mask to disable it. And you can see that's what it was like before, that's what it was like after. No halos, no fancy tone mapping, simply blending in the brighter parts of one image with the darker parts of another. If I click that mask again without holding the shift key, you can actually see how the whole image is just pulling through the darker parts of the image below over the brighter parts of the image on top. Now, let's take a look at that mask again. If we can see there, the cool thing about a luminosity mask, since it's based on the tonal ranges of the image, we can see that it's self-feathering. We don't have to worry about blurring it or any hard image, hard edges rather. The image looks natural simply by blending in using those tonal values. One thing I want to do here is I want to add a curves layer just because I want to add a little bit of contrast. I'm just going to add a very basic S curve and I just want to get a little bit of pop back there and check that out. So where we started was with right here and then we pulled in the brighter parts of the brighter, the darker parts of the brighter image and then a little bit of contrast pop. And so what we've done is we've gone from an image that was a little bit too far one way or the other and we ended up with one that's actually quite balanced and quite nice for our scene. So that's my tip and I thank you for watching and uh, we look forward to seeing you next time. Bye bye now.